What's good with the YouTube? It's your boy Rojo. This is the Rojo Room, man. How y'all doing on this Monday, man? Well, y'all been liking the little personal, you know, sort of uncomfortable stories, basically. So I'm going to tell you one, man. It's the time that the, the individuals, them upstaters, them upstate southerners, they tried to clap your boy. And they damn near succeeded, right? So let me tell you what happened, man. I've been locked up pretty much from 93. I'd only, from 93 to like 99, I'd only seen the streets, or excuse me, 98. I only seen the streets for maybe a hundred days. You know what I'm saying? From the time I became a bro to the time I became an NF member, I didn't last too long the first couple of times. Not because I was messing up. It was because I had a, a, a parole officer who tended to, he didn't like me. He thought I was a young punk, and I was. Let's let's not, you know, make me out like he was just picking on me because I was definitely up to no good, right? So, and every time I got out, man, within a month, he'd hit me with absconding me, even though I was not absconding. You know, I don't got no reason to lie to y'all. If I was absconding, I was absconding. This dude would habitually, man, this, this guy was weird, bro. His name was Marmelstein. Shout out to Marmelstein, motherfucker. This fool would sit down the street, you know, six, seven, eight houses with binoculars and a newspaper, like some shit you see in the movies, like watching me out in front of the crib and whatnot. And uh, to be honest with you, man, when I first got out, I had a place to stay, but it was like real, real square, you know? So, man, I was basically spending 90% of my time at a trap house where we were, where we were hustling out of. You know, it wasn't my parole address or nothing like that, man. But, uh, you know, I come out of my, my real residence where my family lived. Man, I survey the neighborhood. This fool would be sitting down the street, binoculars. Like, come on, bro. I know your car, homie. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> one day I go to, to uh, man, I don't remember if it was Kmart at the time or Big Five. I buy myself a pair of binoculars, right? I go out and I look, sure enough, he's down there. I go, I go inside and get my binoculars and we're staring at each other. He was so mad. He came up here. He came, he, he drove up to the house. He didn't get out. He's like, stop fucking around. <laughs> hey, but uh, after like, man, 28 to 35 days, man, I'd have a warrant for abscounding. I never abscounded, man. I report when I was told. I call in when I was told, whatever. He, what his thing was is he tried to say he left a, a, a note on the door saying that he tried to make contact with me and to call on such such state and I didn't bullshit. He never did. Um my people wouldn't my people would have gave it to me and or 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 advised me of it. You know what I'm saying? So I spent most of my time at the trap house. I was up to no good, man. Hustling rocks and shards, you know what I mean, tree, all that, handling my business. So fast forward, hey. I go, I, I get out in, in 98, you know, I'm NF, you know what I mean? I really start putting things together. Well, I have to move into a neighborhood. I find a house. It's in the Monument Corridor, which has become completely overtaken by upstaters. So I, I don't even really know. I mean, I knew there was a couple over there, but I didn't know the magnitude to which they had established. So I got a house, man. It's on the corner of Nicholas and Lacey Lane. It's in the heart of their territory, like two blocks off of Monument. And at first, man, I'd slide through there, no issues. You know, they were, you know, the younger generation. You know, they were the, man, the 15 to 22-year-olds. You know, I was more familiar with the the, the 22 to 30-year-olds, you know, the, the original ones that were up there. So one day I'm, I'm sliding through. Now, bear in mind, I got some old schools. I got a 75 Monte Carlo and I got a 76 El Camino. They were loud. They had big engines, et cetera. They drew attention. They, uh, the, uh, the Monte Carlo had slump. So I'd be coming through there bumping. You know what I mean? And I'd mob past them. You know, some of the ways into the neighborhood, I could come in way from the other side of the neighborhood and come in and never run into them. But the most convenient ways, there's like three, they were, that was their spot, right? So 
I, at first I was sliding through nothing, nothing, nothing. And then I guess one of them, you know, realized I was probably a northerner, spotted the Mongolian, you know what I mean? Maybe the big ass tattoo on my chest. I don't know what it is. But one day I slide through there and I'm not in one of my old schools. I'm in a Toyota. And I see uh, bottles go flying by me. And man, I slap it in the park. I go to run out. No, there's nobody. I seen like one dude dip through a fence. I'm like, hmm. All right. Well, maybe somebody was just throwing it over the fence, right? So as time went on and on and on, I'd start having brushes with these with these dudes. You know, I mean, I'd go to the store. There'd be two, three, four of them, and they'd be looking at me and shit. I'd be looking at them. Nothing, nothing really serious. You know what I mean? Because I, man, I wasn't trying to engage with them fools because I live right there. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of the times when I slide through, it'd be bottles, rocks, you know what I mean? And then, man, one night, like on a, a weekend, a it was a holiday. I, I want to say it was the 4th of July. I'm, I'm not 100% positive. It might have been Cinco de Mayo. It was, it was one of the big ones where people are partying. No, I slide through there. There had to be 20 to 30 of them. These dudes used to run around with rocks in their pockets, man. I swear to God. I'm just, man, they ate me up, bro. I don't remember... If I was in the, the Toyota or the Acura, but they ate me up. It was a Toyota. They, I was in a little Tercel or something like that. A little, little, little scraper. And uh, they ate the car up. There wasn't even really nothing I could do. I didn't have a thing on me. You know what I mean? Because I was uh, you know, coming from a hot spot. So I wasn't like, eh, I'm not going to take the thing. It's the middle of the day. Three o'clock in the afternoon. They just ate me up with rocks, bro. Got like three windows. There were there wasn't nothing I could do. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Getting out of the car would have been all bad. So I just kept pushing. So I had to eat that one. So about a week goes by. There was one in particular dude. I couldn't stand him, bro. No matter where he was, no matter where I was, he'd be looking at me and he'd man, he'd give me this little stance, this straight cholo stance, and just look at me like EK puto. Then I was like, dude, I will fuck you up, right? And uh, finally, one day, man, I catch him by himself, bro. And I'm like, I'm going to beat this fool's ass. I jump out of the car on like Oak Grove and Riley in, in Riley Court. And I go to chase him. Man, shooting across the street from the other way, here comes a cop. Boop, 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 boop. He, He's seen, well, I had the car parked in the middle of the intersection. He's like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, oh, nothing, man. I was just, I think I left my keys at the homeboy's house. Cops like, get the fuck out of here. He knew, you know what I mean? But he let me slide. Didn't ask me probation, parole, nothing. He probably knew who I was anyway. But uh, so I'm like, man, I'm going to get up. This, man, he be, he was fresh, though. He'd be in his little Dodger shirt. He was creased. And he had the coldest Fuck you, look, I ever seen in my life. He tilted his head back and be like this, looking at me when I drove by. And I was man, I'm going to fuck this dude up, right? So anyway, they figured out where I lived. And, uh, you know, I got I got a thing thing, you know what I'm saying? And uh, they came and tried to bust out my windows one night. And they missed. I, I, I came out just in time to see rocks flying at my car and then run back to the car and leave. Man, I had the tray five, and I was just like, mm, I better not. They're already gone. I probably hit the wrong thing, but they knew I had it. You know, that that's kind of what changed it. I mean, they should have assumed I had it anyway, but that, that kind of changed it. Oh, um, my girl's pregnant at the time with my first kid, so I sent her to live with her mom. So I'm like, look, it's gonna it's gonna go down. Mom's lives one city over. I'm like, I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna handle my business with these dudes one time. So I had like seven homeboys there one night. It was me, Soldier, Crazy, uh, Weddle, Sopple. I can't remember who else was there. Man, we, we got like four things, man, and we got them on us, right? So the police rolled by. So we all go, we all migrate into the house, tuck the guns in the garage, like in a toolbox back behind another toolbox back up against the wall i swear to god we go outside see if the cops are gone man three minutes later man this little four-door honda toyota drives by and they just get to get busy um, a revolver of some sort either a tray eight or a tray five 
and a 25, a little 25 handgun. I'm standing out on the sidewalk and I'm on the corner. You know, I'm, my house is right on the corner. So I'm about 50 feet from where the, maybe 30 feet from where the sidewalks come together to form the corner. They blow through the stop sign right there and they're just like, bah, 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 probably like 14 or 16 of them. Man, I swear to you, I heard one go by my head. I'm like, oh, I ducked behind the car. They're still letting off. This chick's over there. One of the one of the homegirls is sitting in a chair, like right in front of the garage. Anyway, they get to they get to dump it off. None of us have guns on us. Can't even return fire. We probably couldn't have anyway because they blew through there about twenty miles an hour, probably. You know what I mean? Because they assumed that they were going to be, you know, getting some return fire as well. And they would have more than likely at least an attempt by one of us. I might not have because they were going a little too fast and I don't want to hit nobody that's wrong. But uh, one of the other homeboys would have let off. I, I had two. Two of the homeboys were kind of cuckoo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Looney boy, rest in peace, and my boy soldier. None of us got him work during the garage because the cops had just rolled by. Them cops heard them shots. There's no way they could have been far enough already not to have. But there's so many ways to dip through that hood. There's... There's a lot of ways to get out of there. And uh, anyway, make a long story short, one of the neighbors called the cops. The cops show up at my house, like of all places, right? And they're like, uh, did you hear any shots? I'm like, yeah, I think it was like a block over. You know, I'm playing it off. Man, they're out there in the in the street flashing the light around and they're, <laughs> there's little 25 cartridges. Like, so where the girl was sitting, man, this about that close to her head man there's a, a big old thumper in the damn stucco i'm like oh they almost noodled you you know what i mean they hit uh one of my roommate's cars they blasted two through the kitchen window you know what i mean and uh cop was like i thought it was on the other street whatever i'm like i don't know we just got back and you know what i'm saying we're playing it off them fools, they hit my fence in the backyard because if I'd have been, if they would have came and they would have been there with me, I'd have went to jail for one. They probably have some warrants. There's a lot of things. Cops don't search my house. I got four, four bangers in the garage in the toolbox. By now, I had put a lock on it and stuff, and you know, it said my roommate's construction company, like spray painted with a, you know, those uh, little letters where you spray paint and the letters come out perfect. One of those. So, I, I mean, I could have played it off and like, oh, no, that's my roommate's, you know, professional equipment. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't even trip. They're just like, uh, is anybody hurt? I'm like, it's just me here. whoop de whoop 20 minutes of dealing with them, they were gone. But, uh, okay, so that happens, right? Nobody gets hit. Nobody gets nothing. It was a close one. They, they let off some shots, and there was a lot of us there. Nobody got hit. I couldn't believe it. Well, it turns out my boy Looney Boy is related to some of them cats, some of them them Southern dudes. And so, uh, man, we started knocking on doors and trying to, trying to find out who was involved. You know, because even, even though I was, you know, an enemy of theirs and they were an enemy of mine, I didn't just want to give, you know, because, man, I could have made a call and, and had their whole neighborhood decimated. I could have said a couple dozen dudes to ride through there from different directions and just go to town. You know, I, I had the manpower to do that and the authority and the weaponry to do that. But uh, to make a long story short, anyway, the dude, the dude with the little 25, he ended up uh, having a bad day, you know, about a week later. Couldn't find out who the other one was. But uh, yeah, that's, that's one time they almost had your boy. Not the best story in the world, but it was interesting, man. They almost... They almost peeled my cat, man. I heard one go right by my left ear. I don't know how close, but enough to go. And I was like, oh, I ducked down behind the car. Yeah, it was interesting, man. But that's what happens when you live in the middle of the enemy's territory. It's your boy, Rojo. A little quick one for you guys. Hope you enjoy your Monday. I'm out.